Yeah, um, after uh, two days to, well, a day and a half to, to think about our last game and to watch it, um, it was uh, a unique challenge. Um, with, uh, with one of the first times in the last few games we hadn't moved the ball uh, quite as frequently and successfully, that made a different spin on the game. Um, Kurt struggled, um, I would say, probably the last uh, six quarters from the second half of Pittsburgh um, through this game. Not quite as sharp, um, but really just a little bit antsy in the pocket. And so um, it was great for him and for us to have him step back. And, and he was eager to get back in, I think, after he had a chance to catch his breath, see what was happening, just have things slow down for a second. Um, uh, but he will be our quarterback moving forward. Um, and I have confidence in him. There's, there's always uh, growing pains along the way and chances to learn. And I think that's uh, w one of the things that not only um, our quarterback, but our team is working to overcome. Where uh, our special teams, for the most part, played more consistently. We personneled them more accurately. And the production was improved. Uh, kick return, kick coverage, uh, punt return was solid. Um, and punt cover uh, was, toward the end of the game, was strong. But early on, uh, uncharacteristic, there was a few balls that didn't, that didn't really go where, uh, where we're used to seeing them go. And so that would probably be the only thing that was a little bit off. Defensively, we executed fairly well for about um, three and a half quarters. And then uh, the difference in the game, in my opinion, uh, we had two balls go over our head, uh, a return, or, uh, a reverse pass, and a play action uh, still in the 28 to, 28 to 14. We had a play action pass go over our head. And so um, that's been a fairly consistent theme throughout the season as big plays over the top in the pass game. We need to continue to work on securing our secondary. and and big play potential there um, with a lot of just habits that have to continue to be reinforced. And eventually, um, I think we'll be more consistent with our entire team on game day. Uh, but that wasn't the case on Saturday. My job is to make sure that they play consistently, execution sound, and, and the transfer from practice to game is at a higher level. Right now, there's still quite a bit of what I just call slippage, which means when you put something in place in practice and then you go to the game field, there's usually a drop off of some level. And that still continues to show um, we're practicing well, we're working hard. Uh, I'll continue to try to find ways to put our players in the best position possible and our coaches. But it's, it's going to take time, and it's going to take effort, and it's going to take consistency. Um, and there isn't a magical answer. It's just time and effort and consistency and repetition. <coughs> You said after the game that Carolina went after Bryce Hall and tried to exploit mm. that matchup. He, I think he was credited with nine tackles. Did he win some of those battles? And what does that experience kind of do for him going oh, forward? Oh, it, it just is that. The experience part is, is invaluable. Um, uh, North Carolina has a, a run pass option where they, they target the single receiver side or the boundary throw. And that they had that coming into the game. Um, and we toyed back and forth with, um, but their tempo wasn't allowing allowing us to switch corners with Juan and and Bryce, and uh, we believed that he'd be capable. And for the most part, he was on the receiver at the right time, but just uh, um, a half a step away from knocking the ball down or making the critical play. So, uh, good coverage is being on the receiver. Great coverage is knocking the ball down or preventing first downs. And so he played. He played good. He didn't play great, but he played good. And they targeted him a lot uh, with a good receiver, and so he got more experience. Um, we try to simulate that as much as possible in practice, um, but it isn't the same. And so um, with his mindset and how hard he works, I think he'll use that, and, and uh, his game will, will improve from there. Could you talk about Landon Word? Yeah. Looked like he made some plays yes. early on. In, in he, he, was there a decision to play him more? Mm. So, the, so he's been on the verge of playing more for about the past three or four weeks. Um, assignments have been coming um, quicker and quicker to him, and he's becoming more consistent in practice to where we, we've been on the verge of having him have a more significant role, uh, again, for three or four weeks. Zach Bradshaw uh, hurt his ankle and, and hurt it relatively early, and we tried to have him play through it. Then uh, when we put Landon in, um, it was really fun to watch because he made plays. He looked fast, he looked active, and he made um, 
he stood out by not only what he was doing, but how he was doing it in terms of production. And so bright spot of another first year that was out there playing. Um, so at one point that was, uh, I think eight of the guys were, were had significant roles for their first time, not just first years, and Landon did a really nice job. I know that obviously you can't comment on the investigate. Robert, mm -hmm. Coach and I did uh, acknowledge it, it was a distraction, to yes. handle it as a distraction. How do you as a, as a head coach, what's your position on, on handling all that as well? Yeah, um, I, I mentioned to my team a lot. Um, number one, um, it was a distraction, um, but there are distractions that come every year um, in some way, shape, or form. And they take different forms, and they take different identities, and they come from different sources. That's part of dealing with as many young people as we have and being in a role of leadership, handling diversity or um, distraction is part of that. What I share with our team is um, be very selective about the voices you listen to and control what you can control. And so, um, as, as you all know, I'm very careful about what I listen to and because it all has an effect on you, um, whether you, you think you're thick skinned or not, um, it has some influence. And so I ask our team to, to rely on trusted sources um, but then I more specifically have them focus entirely on what can they control and anything else they have to let go and there'll be an appropriate time and appropriate place um, for us to talk openly about um, the investigation when it's over. Um, but in the meantime, the biggest distraction was just uh, um, not that the uh, investigation has been ongoing, that's happened since fall camp. Um, and I've been able to keep that kind of in the background. The biggest distraction was just when it hit um, uh, kind of um, um, uh, the uh, the reports or the national reports that it hit, and that we didn't know when or how or if that would happen, and so that was kind of a, just a reminder of, oh yeah, this happened. Um, this investigation started a long time ago, but now it's kind of everyone's talking about it. That's exactly right. Yeah, because we've been cooperating and working uh, behind the scenes since since August. Bronco, you've coached and faced a lot of um, dual threat quarterbacks yeah. during your career. What's your impressions of wow. Jackson and, and uh, just how how good is he and, and what can you do against a guy like that? Really impressed with him so far. Um, you know, it really isn't fair to make a comparison. I've been asked that um, and that's been the question that, that seems to come up most frequently. And we defended uh, Colin, Colin Kaepernick at Nevada um, in a uh, – in a game, and I don't know how many years ago, but watching him on film, uh, that would be a similar, not identical comparison, a similar similar comparison. Um, this quarterback is very dynamic, um, throws the ball well, runs the ball well, and is super explosive at any given time, and um, quite a challenge. So, man, leverage is super important on a quarterback like this. Um, they have quarterback designed running plays with with blockers um, to block for him. They're certainly the scramble threat. It would be different if if that was all there was. But the supporting cast is is explosive and dynamic as well. So they're able to score as many points as they're scoring by um, not only what their quarterback is capable of doing, but the supporting cast and how spread out they are. And you really kind of have to pick and choose your poison as to where what where and when you choose what to stop. Actually, the same topic. I have a question on it. Which is which is easier or harder to defend? Is it the designed runs where he's such a good athlete, or the scrambles where you're doing everything else wow. and you take off? It, it's they're, they're both really difficult. Um, anytime you have a quarterback that can run, you're really one defensive number short. And so, for instance, if you're defending a pass formation and use conventional coverage, um, you can have enough defenders to um, to be fairly consistent stopping the pass game. That does not count account for quarterback scramble. What that to account for quarterback scramble, that relies on a defensive lineman beating a block and then making a tackle on a quarterback in space. So what happens is, is most teams use some form of uh, man coverage, a little bit of man free coverage, or pretty exotic in the pressures where they're not sound underneath in coverage just to have their eyes on the quarterback. And so that answers the scramble part of it and maybe quarterback runs, but that leaves you very vulnerable to um, the pass game. and. As you watch Louisville highlights, um, there's a lot of balls that are going over the top of people as well, and that's because of their focus on the quarterback. In, in terms of your scout team, and uh, no disrespect to Matt Johns, but you have Devon, Devontae someone else. Cross. Okay, yeah. that was what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And and he's he's uh, a very good athlete, and we'll, we're lucky that he's here. 
I don't know how many <coughs> snaps he was out there for, but I, Chris Sharp was in the secondary some from scrimmage. Is he a player whose role could grow in the second half of the season? It, we're, we're looking for as many players' roles to grow as possible. The season is long. Um, the, uh, the pace that we want um, to, to play at in terms of how fast and how physical is, if anything, I want that to be increased, not decreased. And, and the workload is, is mounting up. So as many players that can qualify, that we can put in, that we trust, we would love to do that. And um, so Landon Word was one of those. Chris Sharp um, is another. Chris Moore is starting to emerge a little bit. Will Wahi, um, Matt Terrell. Uh, those are some of the names that are emerging. Coach, you talked about earlier in the season, maybe even preseason, about how you didn't have the versatility offensively yet to be able to run at the pace you want to. At some point, do you get to a place where not being able to run your pace really hurts your offense yeah. even more so? Because it seems like Carolina was able to really match up with your personnel packages they were. time and time again, where you almost be better off to just throw several guys out there and just kind of see what you can do. What's, mm. the, what's the thought process there? Yeah, not, not necessarily. So we, we really liked uh, and still like our personnel packages. Um, I think what happens is, is as Carolina's approach was a little bit different than what they had shown. Um, they chose to match meaning uh, aggressive man-to-man -man coverage. Their safeties were deep at about you know quarters depth, true traditional quarters depth, and they were using them in run support with kind of man-under coverage. That's why they've been fairly susceptible to, to yardage in the run game, and we had a 100-yard rusher. Um, I think the, that the way I would answer your question is possibly the timing and tempo of our offense, um, especially based on whom we're playing and what the game is look looks like I don't think is affected by who we put in in terms of personnel packages but it might be what we might do is just influence uh, how long um, we hold, we work to hold on to the ball and possession time uh, with the more dynamic offenses we play so I, I wasn't as dis disappointed with um, how we used our personnel um, but possibly uh, possession time increasing that as much as possible might be more of an emphasis coach you you mentioned um, some of the young guys on defense. Uh, on the offensive line, R.J. Proctor has played yes. maybe for a month now, yeah. um, consistent offensive snaps. What's his development curve looking he's, like? He's on track. Uh, we like him, and we think he'll be a good player in the future um, for us. And so it's, it's encouraging to have um, young depth at offensive line. We're not very deep, but we do have him. And, and probably the next most significant as an underclassman, our first year over there is Joe Reed. Uh, and he's doing a nice job. Uh, Bronco, when you're looking at Kurt, um, how mindful are you that it's probably a two-year project and there, mm. there could be some ups and downs along the way? Uh, mindful, and and I think his development and his production um, has been has been on track to this point. Um, and now that we're playing better, excuse me, better and better teams, um, his execution, his performance is having to climb at a um, a more immediate pace, and. That's only realistic if, if he's prepared for that. And so we've seen a few teams. We've seen some looks. He's beat up a little bit. And that's impact has impacted his kind of poise and patience in the pocket just a hair. And so um, again, when we come out of this, um, which we will and he will, I think he'll be more poised and mature and ready because of it. Uh, but again, the road is steep right now in terms of conference play and the opponents we have coming up. Follow up on, on what Ed said about, about Kurt. Have you noticed teams? Obviously, one of his big strengths, particularly against Central Michigan and Duke, is him throwing on the run, getting out, and, and going long a lot of times. It seems like these last two weeks, have teams done something there to prevent him from that at all? No, uh, n not necessarily. Really, all that's happened is, is he's just, again, a little bit more um, uh, insecure in the pocket, um, <laughs> escaping a little bit too quickly. And so the rush hasn't converged quite enough for him to get out, so he's escaping. Uh, and looking to escape prior to the rush collapsing, which means when he escapes, there's still existing leverage. And so, but the coverage and the rushes he's seen really haven't been that different. You mentioned, obviously, uh, Kaepernick is, is the closest thing you've seen to Lamar Jackson. You have faced, though, at someone that with hype in terms of Sam Bradford. I think he oh, opened yeah. up that 2009 season. How did you, and you had success against him. How do you get your guys to not kind of feed into everything else about an individual player and just see him as, a, as an opponent? Man, we, we, we again have uh, in our meetings today. We're we're so focused on just our own execution, which there's um, significant lapses in inconsistency right now. 
And I mean, uh, my point simply to the team is we have plenty to work on just within our own organization. And, and so my intent is to keep their focus on us, on us, on us, knowing the external environment we'll be talking about um, Louisville and their quarterback. And, and so I, I've got to work to make sure the voices that um, are the listened to voices and the trusted voices and the ones they want to um, are the ones that are most compelling are coming from inside because certainly the rest is going to happen with then just to focus on what, what can we do and what can we control. And, but they're kids and they hear it um, through social media, they hear it um, ESPN, they watch game day, you know, they, they hear all that. So to me, it's just taking it more and what can we do and what can we can control. Going back a step to Devontae Cross, uh, and I, Coach and I had mentioned that he's sort of the prototype of what he'd like quarterbacks to kind of have the skill set. What do you like about him and um, what, how much pressure is on him this week to to do a good job mimic, mimicking. Oh, lots, lots, and lots of opportunity for him to to help us get ready, um, and I think he'll do a great job of simulating that as he has um, this year to this point. He's been not only playing quarterback for us um, with the scout looks; he's been playing receiver as well. And he's fast. He's athletic. He's good with the ball in his hands. He's dynamic, and he's maturing. And so, yeah, big role for him. And we're lucky that he's here to help us. Smoke had kind of an atypical game the other day, had enough long runs to rush for more than 100 yards, uh, seven receptions for 25 yards, and, and the long passing game really didn't show much. Right. What, what was the issue there? Their coverage. Um, quite frankly, we didn't separate, nor did we get open and create enough opportunities to deliver the ball downfield. Uh, so North Carolina's coverage was stickier and more consistent than our ability to, to get open. And, and that makes it hard on the quarterback. And so I credit North Carolina. Um, when I watch the game in our game film, I watch it from a really objective view uh, as I'm not with our offense very much. And, and just simply we, we didn't separate well enough and frequently enough to have the long game work. And, and so uh, the yardage reflected that. Our points reflected that. And I think that's, that's a great indicator right now is um, when you tie points to what that game looked like without the downfield throws. Um, what we what we found is we're not consistent enough yet to put the ball in the end zone frequently enough, and so uh, that was one of the takeaways from the game. Uh, Louisville's offense gets a lot of uh, attraction, but uh, their defense is is pretty darn good. Can you talk about what makes that defense so good, and is it easier to play that kind of defense when you have that kind of offense? It, um, so they're well coordinated first. Um, their, their defensive coordinator has a lot of experience and a lot of success. They also have good players. And so when you have a combination of good coaches and good talent, um, that ends up having a, a lot of success. And that's over the, over the years Louisville has done that. They've added um, good football coaches and they've recruited very good talent to fit their schemes and vice versa. And in terms of the style of play, um, when the offense generates as many points as they're generating, that usually forces teams to be playing from behind. When they're playing from behind, that usually means they're more one-dimensional. When they're more one-dimensional, um, you're able to call plays that um, are more aggressive and more specific and one-dimensional, and that helps. And so, yeah, I think it all ties together. You talked about Devonta and, and the scout team. Matt John said he was also working with the scout team last week. Just talk about what you've seen out of him in terms wow. of maybe leadership. He's he's uh, he's remarkable. I, I wish I my vocabulary would allow me to to use even a more profound word than that. Um, he he is our scout team quarterback, and the role that he's playing is giving us our best chance to develop this program as fast as we possibly can um, to what everyone wants it to be. And without Matt um, embracing and helping us in that regard, um, we wouldn't be making uh, nearly the improvement or progress that I see, even though it hasn't uh, resulted in the record nor the tangible um, on-field results in terms of wins at the rate we want. Um, I still see, man, simple successes happening every day. And Matt's right at the core of all that. And he's just uh, he's an amazing person. And his leadership and who he is is 
is exceptional. Along those same lines, I know you mentioned beginning of the year that that backup quarterback position could be kind of in flux. Yes. Uh, obviously, we saw a little bit of Connor, the difficult situation he went in on Saturday, but yep. didn't produce a whole lot. W where are you with that? Is that still an ongoing competition between Matt yeah, and Connor? Yeah, it's an ongoing competition, and and um, and so there there possibly might be um, a shift in roles or assignments there um, if for some reason Kurt got uh, got hurt or happened to you know um, struggle or we need to have him take a step back again it might be Matt um, so coach Beck and coach and I we've talked about that this morning and and we'll kind of take a little time to sort that out but that is ongoing and has been you talked about the different personnel shifts and, and particularly kickoff coverage we saw Quinn there on Saturday how did he do with terms of his whole kind of work capacity and what other starters did you have there that you didn't have before um, yeah, our kick coverage identity completely changed. So Quinn uh, Blanding uh, was on that unit. Well, I wish I had my notes in front of me. Um, uh, um, and did really, really well. Uh, Juan Thornhill was on it and did really well. Um, Kel Kelvin Rainey is also on it. Daniel Ham is on it and did really well. Um, so there's Really, I think uh, every player on the kickoff cover team, as I'm trying just to, to think about him in my head, is a, a starter somewhere else in addition to uh, being on that unit. And, and the results showed they did a really nice job and basically took something that was volatile and unpredictable and made it sound pretty quickly. And yeah, it does affect them um, in terms of their roles offensively and defensively um, as it adds another full speed and dynamic sprint. Um, but our depth is what it is, and so they're doing a nice job by stepping up. Get our last question from Mike here. Detailed question. Uh, the meeting you had with Coach and I and Coach Beck about was that today, Sunday? When do you? No, no that was today. And so um, over the weekend, you know, because we don't come in Sundays and that's the day of rest for our, our players and our coaches, there's texting that's going on back and forth. And then there's some conversations after the game. We're all kind of debriefing. And, and so. Again, we're looking to find just the the right um, situation backup wise in terms of the meeting that most th that will fit um, the offensive plan most similarly to Kurt. And so, if we put, do put in either Connor or Matt, that um, it'll be a very similar plan. So the rest of the cast can be the same. And so, uh, we have most of those meetings. We have that meeting Monday morning. So that's that's when it happened. Pretty much a consensus though on sticking with Kurt, or was there? A oh yeah, uh, that 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 really wasn't um, a. Uh, up for a vote, it was pretty apparent to all of us that that's what we think needs to happen. Um, it's more so as to the depth and what we do there and, and managing that part.